might have, you know, because of what everything that I'm going to be going over. Now I'm going to be going over three different sections. One is going to be regular retirement. The second will be family benefits, including widow's benefits. And then I'll also be covering Medicare. So this is going to be pretty long. I'll be covering a lot of different topics. And again, you're more than welcome to ask questions during um, in the chat box so that, you know, you can, I can try to answer that at the end. Um, all right. So as you can see, it says social security with you through life's journey. And we truly are even during a pandemic. I will say that at this time, social security offices are, I know that physically you cannot go in unless you meet a certain criteria as like um, homelessness or something like that. Um, there are certain criteria where we will make you an appointment, but we are doing all our services over the phone and online. So people are still receiving their checks. You can still file for your benefits. You can file for disability. You can file for supplemental security income. You can file for retirement. You could file for all of these benefits that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, including Medicare. You can do it all online and you could still, like I said, we are available. You can do supplemental security income, disability, retirement, all of the different applications that we have available. Um, you know, while you're in coming, while you're coming in, you could do all appointments um, on the phone as well. And in order to get to the get the information for the local office, your phone number, the address or whatever else that you need to mail things in, because we're doing everything except for people coming in, uh, you would go to www.ssa or social security dot gov slash locator. So you would go to www.ssa.gov slash locator, and you will be able to put in your zip code, and then you can find your local office and give them a call. Office hours are Monday to Friday from nine to four. So we are still available um, just because we're not open to the public only because of you know social distancing guidelines due to the pandemic. We are doing everything over the phone and online. Um, so just wanted to definitely tell everybody about that. Um, if you're trying to get a new social security card, not a replacement, but a new one, um, you know, because you just entered the United States or something like that for immigration reasons, you can come into the office. We will make you an appointment. So you would have to still give us a call, but there's certain things that we will help you with. But if you have a My Social Security account at www.ssa or socialsecurity.gov slash my account, you can create an account. And if you need a replacement social security card, just because you lost one, you're over the age of 18, you're a US citizen, and you need a replacement social security card, you can go ahead and request that online. And you can do a lot of different transactions online, like you could see your statement online that we used to mail out those green and white statements that used to come in the mail. Um, you can do a lot of updates. There's, we have a lot of calculators available as well. Um, and also, if you're getting those scam calls, which I get all the time, robocalls, telling you that your social security number is suspended or you're a fugitive felon or something ridiculous like that, just know that is ridiculous. Uh, social security will never call you and never try to threaten you or ask you for money. So you can hang up on those calls. Now, after this um, webinar, I will provide all the people that registered on via Zoom since you have, um, since the library is nice enough to host it, uh, they have everybody's email address. So I will send everybody a follow up email or I'll send the uh, the host, Adrian, a follow up email with the PDF of all of these slides along with links that will help be helpful as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get this show started. The next slide, again, reiterates that we're with you through life's journey. So as you can see, even a baby all the way up until even after you pass away. Like I said, if you get one of those crazy um, calls telling you your social security number is suspended, just know your social security number is never suspended. Um, people after they pass away, family members can file for widow's benefits, right? So, you know, that number is yours. Even after you die, there is no reissuing of numbers or anything like that. So just know that the social security administration um, will never cancel your card, will never suspend your card. So if you get a crazy call like that, just know that that is fraud and you can report those calls. Now we're with you even as a newborn. If you're in the NICU and um, you were born low birth weight, Social Security does have a program that will offer parents benefits called Supplemental Security Income, and that will also qualify you for Medicaid, which is free health care through social services. 
So again, we are truly with you from the day you're born, even after, until even after you pass away, because you could get widow's benefits as well. Family members can get minor children benefits and even disabled adult child benefits. So we're definitely with you through life's journey. All right, the next slide. Okay, the slide after that. <laughs> so this is a fun little byproduct that Social Security has. Since we collect everybody's name at birth, uh, we actually know the top five baby names that are girls and the top five baby names that are boys. And every year we have a fun little press release letting everybody know what the most popular baby names were. So if you know anybody that's expecting or if you know anybody that um, is uh, is trying to figure out if their name was a popular baby name, uh, you know, we're available. You can definitely go to our website instead of investing in a baby book and definitely um, check out to see what's the most popular girl names and the most popular boy names. Now, you, if you click on that link or if you look at the very bottom of each slide you'll see socialsecurity.gov that is our website so you are more than welcome to you know get on that website register for your my social security account check out your statement you know like i said you can order your social security card online you don't have to contact the local office you don't have to call them or mail anything in there's a lot of services available um, but that is a fun little byproduct that we have since we get collect all names at birth. So we have a collection of all the baby names in the last hundred years. Uh, so if you're looking to see if your name was a popular name or if somebody's expecting, you definitely have that resource available. All right, the next slide. The main thing that people think about when they think about social security is work, right? When you're working, we cut your social security taxes, right? So the slide after this, talks about FICA. FICA is your social security tax. FICA stands for Federal Insurance Contributions Act, and it's exactly what it is. It's an insurance. The more you put in, the more you get. Now, how do you determine how much is put in? Well, you necessarily don't. Your employer is the one who takes care of FICA. So this is a tax that you don't actually have to pay out of pocket. It comes out of your gross pay. It's one of those taxes that come out of your paycheck every paycheck. So every check that you receive when you're working, 7.65% comes out. That is your FICA tax. That is your social security tax. Your employer matches it. So you actually receive over 15% when it's time for you to retire. Um, so most people don't realize that. Um, it pays, it also covers, so from that 7.65%, like I said, your, your employer matches it. 6.2% of that 7.65% is your money. So when you get your green and white statement and it talks about and it talks about retirement, family benefits, survivor benefits, that's going to be your money. 1.45% is going to be Medicare Part A. So that's how the 7.65% is actually calculated. 6.4, sorry, 6.2% is your money and 1.45% is your Medicare Part A. Um, and then, of course, it pays for all different types of programs. It pays for retirement, disability, wounded warriors, and even children's benefits, right? So if you look in your green and white statement, you'll see there's a whole category of different benefits. Um, so definitely go ahead and check that out because it's not only for you, it could also be for your family. And that's why we send you those green and white statements to verify that the amount is correct, that the amount is correct. What we have on your W-2 is correct uh, with what, what we have at, at Social Security. Because if there is a discrepancy, it's very, very, very important that you make sure you let Social Security know, because this is your money. This is what's being calculated. This is your money. Um, so that is what FICA is. And as you can see, we send you those, we used to send you those green and white statements. We stopped mailing those out because of identity theft. People steal people's mail. So now to see your statement, you do have to go online and you have to create your social security account. It is not done automatically for you. So again, you do have to go to socialsecurity.gov slash my account and you'll be able to create one. Not only can you get your social security card replaced, if you lose your card, you're over the age of eight you're a U.S. citizen, but you also can see your statements. And as you'll notice, because everything is housed online now, you'll also see all the calculators uh, that we have. So when you're planning for retirement, we have different calculators too. All right, the next slide. So the next slide talks about how many people actually pay into Social Security. Well, pre-pandemic, 
before there was a pandemic. Uh, on average, we're looking at 180 million people are in the workforce. 180 million people are working and paying into social security. Again, pre-pandemic. Pandemic changed some things. Unemployment rates went high. That's not the case. But on an average basis, we're looking at 180 million working and paying into social security, paying into FICA. Most people talk about social security running out, but they're not seeing how much is coming in. Right. Um, also, about 94% of all workers are covered under Social Security. As I mentioned, your employer takes it out. Right. So since your employer takes out Social Security, there are some employers that do not. If you are a federal employee before the 1980s, you did not work and pay into FICA or Social Security. You paid into the civil service retirement system. So you get another type of check. Now you're in Virginia. So Virginia, you do pay into Virginia retirement system, right? Now that's a plus because VRS, Virginia retirement system does take out for social security. But if you're in a state like New York, California, Ohio, you're Texas, you're not paying into social security. So if you're a state employee of those, if that of that state, not a Virginia state employee, but a state employee of Ohio, Texas, or one of those other states, they're not taking out for FICA. They're only taking out their retirement system. So as Virginia state employees, if you are a Virginia state employee, like if you work for a university or a hospital or anything that's state run, then you are paying into both. So that's amazing, right? You'll get two checks. You'll get a Virginia retirement system check and you'll get a social security check. Most employers though, they do take out for social security. That's why I said 94% of employers, 94% of Americans will receive social security. But if you're, if you're with an employer that does not take out for social security, they're not gonna, you're not gonna get it because you have to pay into it. Again, it's FICA, Federal Insurance Contributions Act. The more you put in, the more you get, like life insurance. All right, and on the next slide, the next slide talks about beneficiaries. So as you can see, there's a lot of people receiving social security too. Now this number is from 2019, okay? As you can imagine, 2020 pandemic, people had to file for retirement, early retirement. People that were thinking that they were gonna retire later might've lost their jobs, right? People that were disabled and were working part-time could have lost their jobs. And so that made people make a decision earlier than later what they were planning. Plans change, right? So this is just to tell you in 2019, we're looking at 61 million people that are on social security benefits, right? We're gonna add 2020 into the mix. We're looking at seven more million people. So we're looking at close to 67, maybe 68 million people receiving benefits, okay? So that's a lot of people receiving checks. Now, um, Supplemental security income is a needs-based program. It's a program based on need. So when we're talking about children receiving benefits, right? We're not, we, they haven't worked and paid into social security. There, but, and just because their parents have doesn't mean that they would qualify. They, we look at supplemental security income is a needs-based program. So it's a different type of program. So supplemental security income is based on need. And it's a program that talks about, so we look at, it's a financial based. So since it's financial based, we do a financial screening. If your person is under the age of 18, we look at parents' income, we do a financial screening based on parents' income. Once the person turns over 18, we no longer look at parents' income, we look at their own income. Since we look at their own income, uh, we're trying to figure out um, if they're married, you know, uh, we look at income resources and living arrangement situations. So we're looking at all of that. Um, also, if they are 65 and above, you don't have to have a disability. You can just get it based on financial need. So it's, it's a supplemental security income program. You don't have to necessarily, necessarily work and pay into it. Even a child can get it. A newborn can get it. Before 18, we look at parents' income. After 18, we look at your income. You do have to have a disability. If you're filing after the age of 65, we're only looking at your income. We are not looking at um, your disability. Because after 65, things to kind of things tend to mess up anyway, right? So you don't necessarily have to file for disability at that point, okay? And then we're also looking at 2.7 million. Of course, this number has grown, uh, but 2.7 million people receiving both types of checks, either a social security check and an SSI check. So as you can see, 
millions of Americans, I'm talking close to 70 million, more than 70 million, close to 80 million people are in the United States are dependent on social security. And that's a lot of money going back out to the economy every month. Because remember, social security pays every month. The next slide talks about how much money is paid out every month. Oh, okay, the next slide after this. Well, definitely we wanna talk about retirement, okay? We're definitely gonna do that. Well, before I get into that, we're gonna go into another source that we don't have on our website. It's called mymoney.gov. Now mymoney.gov is a very important source because it's not on our website, but it is part of the federal, we had 20 different entities and social security was one of those federal entities that was part in making up this mymoney.gov website. Now this is important. I understand many of you guys might have a financial planner that you ask questions to, but it's good to know about different resources so you can ask better questions, right? So not only do you have the calculators that we have available on our website through social security, but we also have the mymoney.gov website that you can use. And we're not trying to sell you anything. This is an unbiased website. This is run by the federal government. It is an unbiased website. It is not trying to sell you anything. So just know that you, know, you have this other resource available to you uh, that should be helpful, okay? The slide after this, the slide after this talks about money, okay? So as of December of 2019, 45.1 million, this is just retirement workers, are receiving $67.8 billion in social security benefits per month. Again, we pay out a lot of people a lot of money. This is per month. So this is $70 billion going back into the economy every month just through social security. Now, at the same time, 3.1 million dependents of retired workers are receiving 2.4. This is just their family members. This is just their minor kids, their spouses. Just their family members are receiving $2.4 billion in social security benefits each month. So you can imagine how many people are receiving money. And again, last year, you can imagine more and more so people had to file because of the unexpected pandemic, right? So the slide after this talks about how do you qualify for benefits? So one of the most common questions I get at Social Security, and I've been with them about 19 years now, close to 20 years. Um, the most common question I receive is, number one, do I qualify for benefits? Well, if you've worked at least 10 years, you do. So you just need to really have 10 years of work that did work and cut Social Security taxes, FICA taxes. So. Every year you work, you get four credits. So if you've only worked 10 years, you should be good. This is more for people starting off. Most people listening to me have probably worked their 10 years, probably worked 20, 30, even 40 years and trying to figure out um, you know, how much their benefits will be. But by earning credits when you work, so every three months, every January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, every three months, you earn a credit. You have to make a certain amount. And in, 20, uh, in 2021, that amount is gonna be 1470 every three months. So as long as you gross before taxes, before anything is cut, $1,470, you have earned your credit. This is really for people starting off, okay? Um, if you have 1470 and you times it by four because you have four quarters, for the year, you only have to make 5,000, Sorry, $5,880. So if you take that 1470 times it by four, you only have to earn $5,880 so you can earn your four credits for the year. Like I said, you need a minimum of 10 years, okay? And of course, you're gonna be making more than 1470 every three months because we got bills, right? We got lights that we need to keep on. We got rent, we got mortgage. So obviously you're gonna be paying, you're gonna be making more than that. So that's why it is important that you check out your statement because you want to make sure your money's right. The next slide talks about calculation. So since you're talking about calculations, how do we calculate your benefits, right? If you've only worked 10 years, that means that you have enough, that means that you have enough credits, right? You'll get something, right? You'll get something, you'll get something minimum. But really when we're looking at calculating your benefits, we're looking at the highest 35 years of the last 40 years of work. So we're looking at the highest 35 years of the last 40 years of work when we're looking at calculating your check, okay? So if you have only 10 years of work, that means that we're gonna look at, we're gonna have to add 25 zeros 
to your average. So since it's 25 zeros, then you're gonna be, you'll probably lower your average, right? So the more you put in, the more you get. Like I said, FICA, Federal Insurance Contributions Act. The more you put in, the more you receive, right? It's an insurance. So that's what we're looking at when we do the calculation. Again, we look at the highest 35 years of the last 40 years of work. And then we also have to take into consideration inflation, right? Inflation in the sense that what you made in 1990 is not gonna fly in 2021 right? The value of the dollar has gotten less. You need more money to live, right? So since you need more money to live, we can't pay you based on what you made in 1990 and 2021. We have to pay you based on what you're going to be able to live on in 2021. So that means that all of your earnings are indexed. They're all indexed for inflation, okay? So that's why, again, <laughs> I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to ch check your earnings record because we're gonna put in what you actually made to match your W-2. But when we go in to do the calculation, again, we look at inflation, okay? We have to take that number and we have to index it to figure out how much is it worth in today's dollars, okay? On the next slide, we're gonna go into full retirement age, okay? So on the next slide, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a few different things. Most people have thought, have coined full retirement age at the age of 70. As you can see, that is not true. Full retirement age is based on the year you were born, okay? It could be 66, it could be six, it used to be 65, right? Before Reagan's time, it used to be 65. 65, you got your Medicare, you got your social security and you were done, one and done. That's changed, right? You can still get your Medicare at 65, but your social security, your actual amount, if you wanna get your full amount, that full average that I talked about, the highest 35 years of the last 40 years and also looking at inflation, not reduced, not increased, your actual average, you're looking at it at full retirement age. And as you can see, if you were born any time between 1943 up until 1960, it fluctuates. It could be 66 and two months. It could be 66 and four months. It could be 66 and eight months. It could be 66 and 10 months or six months, or it could be 67. So if you were born after 1960, like me, your full retirement age is 67. It is not 70. Most people have coined it at 70. That is not the case. That is when you get your full amount, not a reduction, not an increase based on the highest 35 years of the last 40 years you've worked and looking at inflation. Okay, so this is what full retirement age looks like for people that were born within those years. Now on the next slide, we're going to do a chart. So on this chart, it talks about when you want it, the most common question I get, and I've worked in a lot of different offices. I've worked in Atlanta, Georgia. I've worked in Houston, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, all around Richmond, all around Tidewater. So I've worked in a lot of different offices. And I will say that one of the most common question I receive is when should I take my check, right? And you, as you can see, you have some options, right? You could take it as early as 62, or you could wait until you're 70. Right, so you have these options. Um, if you take it as early as 62, you are looking at a reduction. Now remember, full age is the age that I said. If you were born after 1960, your full age is 67. If you were born prior to that in the 50s, it could be 66 in two months, four months, six months, eight months, or 10 months, right? So that's your actual full amount. That is not a reduction, that is not an increase. So we're gonna use this as an example. On this example that I have here on this bar chart, we're gonna say 66 is the full retirement age, okay? At 66, this person is gonna receive $1,000, okay? They're gonna receive a thousand bucks, easy enough. If they take it as early as 62, they're looking at a 25% reduction. So instead of getting seven, instead of getting $1,000, they would receive $750, right? So that's what they're looking at with that. Now, if remember, full age, full benefit, you could make as much as you like. But if you take it any time before full retirement age, you cannot make as much as you want. 
there is a limit to how much you can make if you're working. Now, we don't care about any other checks. You could be getting unemployment. You could be getting another pension. You could be getting VA. You guys are heavy military uh, in that area. <laughs> so you could be getting a VA check. You could be getting all sorts of checks. But when it comes to wages or self-employment, you have to be partially retired if you take it before your full retirement age. Again, you could take it as early as 62. The maximum reduction is going to be 25%. Every month you wait, it does go up, as you can see. All right. Now, when people ask me, when should I take my check? I always say, how long do you plan on living? All right. We don't have a magic ball. All right. But I will give you an example. If you notice past the age of 66 or in this example, 66 is their full retirement age. That's the age they can make as much as they like. They're, they can get a thousand dollars a month and they're they're happy. Right. But let's say they wait any month you take it after any year you decide to take it after there is an eight percent increase. OK, so there is no increase past the age of 70. So that's why most people think full retirement age is 70. Not the case. If you take it any time after full retirement age, you have an 8% increase every year, but there is no benefit in waiting past the age of 70. So if you're getting an 8% increase and full retirement age in this example is 66, OK, if you're looking at 4%, I mean, 8% for four years, that's 30, that's 32%. So instead of getting $1,000, you're going to receive $1,320, right? 32%. Yes, sir. So, so since you're going to get a 32% increase, some people want to wait until they're 70. Why not, right? It's more money you can get in interest if you have it sitting in a bank. But again, you tell me how long you plan on living. So you're giving up $1,000 a month at the age of 66 per month, right? So you're looking at four years. So 66 to 70, if you're looking at per month, four years, 12 months, 48 months, right? So you've just given up $48,000 so you can get an extra $320. Now, how long do you have to live to get that $48,000 back that you just gave up? On average, we're looking at 13 to 14 years. So instead of waiting until instead of instead of you could take it at 70, but you'll have to live till 83 or 84 years old to actually get your $48,000 back, recover that, what you gave up on the front end, right? So there's that term you hear, break-even point. This is what we're talking about, break-even point, okay? So again, it's really dependent on you. Uh, of course, after the age, after your full retirement age, you can make as much as you like. You're still working. You're still paying into FICA. That means you will still get recomped. Your benefits will be recomped. So we will still continue to see, because it's under your social security number, the highest 35 years of the last 40 years. As long as you are working and you're past full retirement age, you still get credit for that. And you'll still get delayed retirement credits. Or like I said, if you don't take it, you still get an 8% increase, whether you're working or not. So again, it is a personal choice. And that's why we have 11 calculators available on our website. So you can figure out when's the best time for you to take it, maybe the best time for your family members to take it on your record. So we have a lot of different choices here. All right, the next slide talks about your work. As I mentioned, if you take it before full retirement age, full age, full benefit, make as much as you like. But if you take it prior, you're under a limit. So what's the limit in 2021? The limit is $18,960 a year. Okay. So if you're trying to take benefits before your full retirement age and you want to work, you can only work part time and you can only make $18,960 a calendar year. That's from January through December. OK, now that comes out to one thousand five hundred and eighty dollars per month. OK, so if you're going to go ahead and take the benefit in the middle of the year, because let's say your birthday is in June. Right. And we don't care what you made from January through May because you didn't take benefits in January through May. Right. So if you took benefits starting in June, we only care about what you made starting in June. OK, now, if you can only make if we take that eighteen thousand nine sixty that again, it comes out to fifteen eighty a month. So that means from June through December. You can only make $15.80 per month gross. That's before taxes, before anything is cut. For every $2 you make over that, we withhold a dollar from your check. So if you're going to be making $20,000, we're going to subtract $15,960, um, $15, whatever's left, divide it by half, and that's what you're going to get a notice on stating you're overpaid. You don't want to be overpaid. You always want to stay under the limit, okay? So that is that. Now, the year that you turn full retirement age, you do get a little bit of a break, okay? So you can actually make three times as much. 
you could make $50,520 a year, okay? Um, and until your full retirement age. So let's say your full retirement age is in June. You'll turn 66 in June. After June, you can make as much as you like. But from January through May, if you decide to get benefits, you'll be, you'll be, you can work and you can make $50,520 those first five or six months. So that kind of gives you an idea. And for every $3 you make over, we withhold a dollar from your check. So you do get a break. You do get a break every, the year you turn full retirement age, okay? So hopefully that helps you if you're planning, okay? The next slide. Life expectancy. So most people do decide to wait, obviously, because people are living longer, right? Full retirement age change because people are living longer, right? Like I said, 65 used to be the it age. You used to file for retirement, file for Medicare, one and done, right? So now, so now it's going to be if a man is if a man is 65 today, though, he's expecting to live until he's 84 years old. And a woman who's turning 65 today can live an average of expected to live an average of 86 and a half. But again, these are just averages, right? Most people are living longer, right? People are living into their 90s, even past 100 years old. So that is important for you to understand that it really is a personal decision because you might get more money if you wait, you know, but you never know. <laughs> and now if you want to know how long you're going to live, the link um, the link below here is your life expectancy calculator. Yes, we have one of those also in our website. So you could definitely check out that calculator as well. The life expectancy calculator, what you're doing is you're trying to figure out how long your parents lived and if they passed away with a natural death. If they passed away with natural causes, then you'll kind of get an idea of how long you're going to live based on your genes, right? So, um, so that's important. So yes, we do have a calculator for that. Definitely check it out um, because it might help you figuring, figure out your break-even point and if it's worth it for you to wait, right? So the slide after this talks about, well, we went over this, about dependents, right? So we're going to go right into family benefits. So what I talked about just now is your retirement benefits, how it's calculated, how you're eligible for benefits, when, you know, your, your time frame on when you could take it between 66 to 70 or 62 to 70. We talked about early retirement, how much you can make if you take it before your full retirement age. We talked about delayed retirement credits, which you could get past seven, uh, close to 70, not past 70. We talked about full retirement and what that means. And if you want to work, you could make as much as you like at full retirement age and what you could make if you take it before full retirement age. So that's just a recap of what we talked about. Now, the next slides are going to be based Based on family benefits, okay? So, oh no, we'll go back to the previous slide. Sorry about that. Okay, so when we're talking about family benefits, as I mentioned earlier, as of December of 2019, 3.1 million dependents of retired workers are receiving $2.3 billion in Social Security each month. Now, these are family members. At the same time, 1.6 million dependents of disabled workers were receiving $616 million in Social Security benefits per month. OK, so again, we're looking at a lot of money going back into the economy every month. OK, so the next slide after this talks about auxiliary benefits for children. We're going to go into children first um, and then we can go into spouses. OK, so children's benefits. A child who is eligible for benefits through a parent's record, again, this is different than that supplemental security income program because that's based on need. It's not based on work. Right. That's tax free. This is social security, what you worked and what you paid into. And if you check on your statement, it talks about family benefits for children and spouses. This is what we're covering on that statement, what you worked and paid into. So a child, of course, has to have a parent who is, if a parent is alive, they have to be receiving benefits, okay? So if a parent is alive, they have to either be receiving retirement benefits or disability benefits, or a parent who's passed away which we've seen a lot during COVID, right? So a parent who's passed away and um, a parent who's passed away, but they have worked enough, but they have worked enough so that they could have enough credits. That means they've worked at least 10 years so they can get something. So if they can't get it, now they've passed, their children can get it, okay? Now the child has to be unmarried, has to be younger than the age of 18, 
right? Has to be 18 to 19 years old and a full-time student, okay? No higher than grade 12 or 18 or older and disabled, okay? So either they have to be a student before the age of 18, they can get it as a minor child if a parent is receiving disability, retirement, or passed away, or if they were declared disabled before the age of 22, okay? So they have to be declared disabled before the age of 22. Usually that's gonna happen through the SSI program after they've turned 18, right? If a parent hasn't filed yet. So for example, let's say a parent is filing at 62, their child is now 40. Not only is that parent eligible to get benefits off of their own record, but they could also file for that disabled adult child, right? But how do you declare that this child was disabled? Well, as I mentioned, once you apply for supplemental security income after the age of 18, we no longer look at parents' income, right? It's an income-based program. So if we're no longer looking at parents' income, we're just looking at their income and their disability. So if they were declared disabled before the age of 22, and they're still getting SSI benefits, and that parent is now filing for retirement, then guess what? That parent can protect that child as a disabled adult child, right? So again, we have a lot, um, we have a lot of different programs here. <laughs> All right, so the next slide after this, and that disabled adult child, by the way, will even receive benefits after their parents pass away. So that's huge, that's huge. Because most parents wonder, right? What's gonna happen to my child after I pass away? Especially if you have a disabled child. So this is a relief to them knowing that their child will get some sort of income, some sort of Medicare you know, insurance, even after they've passed away, okay? They just have to pick somebody that they trust to look after that money. All right, now we're gonna go into spousal benefits. So, for a spouse to get benefits off of their husband or wife's record, number one, to file, you have to be currently, if you're currently married, not separated, not, well, not divorced, you can be separated and, and legally married, um, but you have to be currently married, even if you're separated, you have to be currently married, not divorced. So you have to be currently married for you to get benefits off of their, ben off of their record. You have, they have to be, you can be divorced, but they have to be receiving benefits. So if you're married, not divorced, or you could be separated, but your spouse has to have an active record. You have to be receiving benefits or your spouse has to be receiving benefits for the spouse to get benefits. Kind of like that child benefit where the parent has to be receiving benefits for the child to get it. Same thing, if you're still married to your spouse, your spouse has to be on social security for you to go ahead and apply under their record. That is if you're still married, even if you're separated, that's okay. But if you're legally divorced, that's a different scenario, okay? You only get 50%. OK, so we're going to go ahead and go back to Social Security history, evolution of Social Security. Social Security was passed 86 years ago with Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was the president. It was passed during the New Deal. OK, that was a time when depression, when people were going through the Great Depression, people lost money. If you know anybody who's been through the Great Depression, they know that they are, you know, that they are very protective right, of their belongings. Right. Um, so they're hoarders. They're known as hoarders. Um, but. So this was a time when America was going through a huge poverty rate because of the war and we needed some help. This was the same time at the New Deal that unemployment was passed, that TANF aid to families with dependent children, that program was passed and social security was passed. So during that time, a lot of different programs were passed to help the economy grow back, right? To get people out of poverty, okay? So when we're talking about spousal benefits, at that time, 86 years ago, only one spouse was working, right? So once this person files for benefits, once the main breadwinner files for retirement, that one check had to cover two people. Now that didn't help. So again, people were going back to poverty, right? So that's when they opened up two spousal benefits, okay? As a spouse, you can get up to 50% of benefits off of your spouse's record. If your benefit is less than 50%. So if my benefit's gonna be $1,000, my spouse's benefit is going to be $400. If they wait till their full retirement age, then they can get an extra $100 from my record. It's not, I'm not going to lose any money because I'm getting it based on what I worked and what I paid into, and they're getting it based on the fact that they're my spouse, okay? So we're looking at $100 extra uh, that they could get off of my record, okay? Because I worked and paid into it. That's that family benefit. But let's say I'm going to get $1,000 and my spouse is going to get $800. If that's the case, then there's nothing payable to my spouse because they're going to get more than 
right? 800 is more than a, a 50% of $1,000, whereas 400 is only 40%. So they would get that extra 10% to equal out that 50% to get that $500, okay? Again, it's not gonna affect me because it's based on what I worked and my benefit is based on what I worked and what I paid into. And when my spouse takes it, it depends on their age. Okay, and what their benefit is based on what they worked and what they paid into. So again, if they take it before their full retirement age, they are subject to a reduction. But if they take it after their full retirement age, they would get 50%. Now there is no delayed retirement credits when it comes to spousal benefits. So there is no benefit in waiting past full retirement age as a spouse. You will get 50% if you take it at 66, you will get 50% if you take it at 70. There is no benefit in waiting past full retirement age as a spouse, okay? So that's, um, that's some things there, right? The next slide is gonna go into independently entitled divorce spouses. So divorce spouses. And I say independently entitled divorce spouses because if you notice, I mentioned something like, if you're married to your spouse, you have to wait, right? Even if you're separated. But if you're divorced from your spouse, you don't have to wait, all right? You can take it before they even take it. You don't have to wait. You qualify as an independently entitled divorce spouse. So if you're waiting, if you're taking it past the age of, um, 60. Well, if you're taking it as a divorce spouse, the only thing that we're looking at is your age, as long as you're 62, as long as your ex is 62. It doesn't matter if they're remarried and they have a family. None of that stuff matters to us. All we're concerned about is your age and their age, as long as they're 62, that you're divorced. Now you do have to do 10 years. So if you're married or were married to somebody, you have only been married for 10 years and you should be okay. Now, if you are married to a few different people, but single now, we'll go through all of them to see if you are married for at least 10 years. So we need certificates. As you can see, Social Security is not only for yourself, it's also for your family. So that's why we ask for marriage certificates and birth certificates and divorce decrees and death certificates, because it's based on relationship, right? And we can't just pay somebody based on what they say. We need to see the proof. So as long as you are married to your spouse or spouses for more than 10 years and you're single now, then you could qualify for benefits. Now you as the applicant that comes into file has to be unmarried. You have to be 62 years old. And remember spousal benefits, either you're married to them or you're not, it has to be more than 50%. So that means your benefit has to be less than 50% of what you could get off of their record. Okay, so if they're going to get 1000, you're going to get 400, then you can get an extra 100. But if your benefit's going to be 800, and their benefit's going to be 1000, then there's no benefit in you getting anything even as a divorced spouse, because you're not going to get anything more, right? You're, you're going to get, you're going to get less from their record. Okay, and you can't get both checks. People have tried, you cannot get both checks. Now, when I think about independently entitled divorced spouse, the example I like to give is the cute little couple in the nursing home right? You have a cute little couple in the nursing home and that couple is always going to be friends. They're never getting married. Why are they never getting married? Because uh, they know that if they get married, then that will mess up that extra check. You have to be unmarried if your ex-spouse is still alive, okay? Doesn't matter how old you are, you could be 80, but if your ex-spouse is still alive and you're getting a higher benefit off of their record, and you get married to somebody else, now we look at your current spouse. So that could mess up that extra amount. So you might wanna tell, ask your boo that you're hanging out with how much their social security check is to see if you could get a higher amount, right? Um, so that's, that's what I always say. You have to be unmarried to continue to get the ex's record amount. 62, as long as they're 62, it's fine. They don't even have to file yet. Um, and again, the benefit has to be more than 50%, okay? Now the next slide talks about deemed filing. Now this was a change that happened in 2016, okay? So deemed filing is when, deemed filing is when, um, when uh, you're filing for benefits and you are due other benefits. So let's say you're married, but your spouse has not taken benefits yet. 
You can go ahead and file under yours, but you can't take it under theirs yet, okay? But if you're an independently entitled divorce spouse, okay, then you can. You can go ahead and take benefits off of your record. And if you're entitled to anything more off of their record, then you have to take something off of your ex's record or a survivor or whatever the case may be. So if you become eligible for Social Security benefits, both as a retiree and as a spouse or a divorce spouse, and you want to go ahead and claim your benefits, benefits, you must file for both benefits. Meaning if your spouse is, if you're married to your spouse and they have not taken it yet, you cannot do that until they take it. But if you're divorced from your spouse, you can. If you are trying to get it as a survivor, you can. It applies for um, at any age for people who turn 62 after January 1st of 2016. So more information on that you could read up on under the deemed FAQs and there's a link. And I'm going to be providing all of these links to you um, at the sometime tomorrow, Adrian will have this information. Okay, so the next slide is talking about survivor benefits. So when you pass away, of course, as I mentioned, we're with you even after you pass away. Your number never gets suspended, right? So as a widow, you could get benefits as well, okay? Uh, you can get benefits as a widow as early as 60. As long as you're 60 years old, you can get benefits as a widow. You can continue to wait until your full retirement age. But at 60, if you've heard that term, people are worth dead, uh, they're worth more dead than alive. Unfortunately, when it comes to Social Security, this is true. Uh, you can get benefits at 60, you'll get 71.5% of your widow's benefit. But if you take it at full retirement age, instead of getting 50%, you could get 100% of your ex's benefit, the one who passed away. So again, uh, if you've heard that term, <laughs> it's true. Now, the other thing with widow's benefits is that if you can go ahead and you'll only, there's no benefit again in waiting past full retirement age. You'll get 100% at full retirement age. You don't get more than 100%. So if you take it, um, bear with me just a second. If you take it, you, there's no point in waiting past full retirement age because you'll get 100% of what they would have received um, anyway before they passed away. But it does depend on your age at the time. So you could take it as early as 60 or you could wait and take it or you could wait and take it past full retirement or up to full retirement age, okay? So you have that. Um, so, yeah, and again, you could take it as early as 60 or you could wait until full retirement age. All right, um, we could go to the next slide. Okay, so survivor benefits, you can, again, a child can get benefits if their parent has passed away. Their child will have to, um, their child will get benefits as soon as their parent, if their parent passes away. So of course you have children that could get benefits if a parent has worked and paid into social security enough. Um, disabled child benefits are for those that were declared disabled before the age of 22. And then you also have widow's benefits. As I mentioned, you can get it as early as 60, or you could wait until your full retirement age. There's no benefit in waiting past full retirement age. You can take it as early as 50 if you are a disabled widow. So there is an exception for disabled widows. So you can get it as early as 50 if you are a disabled widow. Okay, um, the next slide are other survivor benefits. So parents can also get benefits off of their, parents can also get benefits off of their child's record if their child predeceased them. So if their child passed away, then parents can get benefits off of their record. Now the parent has to be 62 years old and the child had to have put them down as a dependent. So that means that the child had to have shown that they that their parent was their dependent, okay? so. So, so they have to have shown that. So the thing is that they have it on our tax record or they have to show that they had, um, they were taking care of 50% of their expenses. So they have to have a paper trail. They have to show bills. They have to show receipts to show that this parent was truly
child, um, if there is no spouse, it is not for separated spouses. It's not for divorced spouses. It is not for spouses that were just living together. It is as somebody who is officially married. The only exception to that is nursing home. So if a spouse was in a nursing home, then, you know, that was not really separated. It was due to a medical reason. Now, if there is no spouse, because maybe they were divorced, and they have minor children, then that child could get um, extra benefits off of the parent's record. They can get that 255. If there's two kids, it's split. So instead of getting 255 each, they would get 12750 each. Okay. And then of course you have so you have the lump sum death benefit um, or a disabled adult child. So if there's a disabled adult child, then that disabled adult child could get benefits as well. Um, and instead of a minor child, if there's no minor child. So that's information on survivor benefits. The next slide. Go to the next slide. Adrian. Perfect. So we're going to do, oh no, the slide before that, the slide before that, the side by side comparison. So one slide back. Perfect. Thank you. So I don't see it. Okay, perfect. So what we're looking at, what we just went over with family benefits is the recap, right? When you're looking at someone who's a spouse that's living versus a spouse who's passed away, right? So a spouse that's living, if you're trying to get benefits off of a spouse that's living, you can take it as early as 62. You can wait until full retirement age. There is a reduction anytime you take it before full retirement age. Full retirement age, you would get up to 50%. That's full retirement of the spouse that's taking it, the one who's applying, not the spouse that's already taken it, okay? Um, so you would get 50% at full retirement age or less if you take it early. There is a reduction. You do have to have been married at least 10 years. You do, <laughs> you do have to have been married at least 10 years in order for you to get benefits as a divorce spouse, okay? Remember, if you're divorced and you get remarried, you cannot... You cannot get that extra benefit, okay? Because remember, think of that couple in the nursing home. They're going to hang out with each other, but they're not getting married because that could affect their check, okay? Now, the next slide, after, I mean, and then we're looking at survivor benefits. You could get benefits as early as 60, and you could wait until full retirement age. At 60, you would be getting 71.5% if you take it as early as 60. But remember, there is full age, full benefit, you can make as much as you like. So if you're taking it any time before your full retirement age, you cannot make as much as you like. You're looking at 18,960 for the year if you're taking it in 2020 with 2021, which is about 1580 a month, okay? Now, um, it increases every month you wait, so it could be up to 100% if you take it at full retirement age if you wanna wait. Now, reality, a lot of people take it at full retirement age, okay? People are living longer. So what they'll do is they'll take the widow's benefit at full retirement age and then they work and make as much as they like or they wait and they get their delayed retirement credits because that will only be for the person that's applying for the one person and that could be until you're 70 okay so a lot of people will wait until 70 take the widow's benefit at full retirement age but take their own at 70 because they've worked and they've paid into social security even after their spouse has passed away so their benefit is more Okay, so and again, for divorced spouses, you have to have been married at least 10 years. Now, if you're a widow, you can get remarried after 60. Okay, if your spouse is still living, you cannot get remarried if you're taking benefits off of their records. If you're divorced and your spouse is still, your ex spouse is still living, you cannot get remarried, even if you're 80. But if you are a widow, you can get remarried after the age of 60. So you can meet the love of your life and start your second chapter with that person. If you're filing as a widow, though, and you're divorced, you have to have been married at least 10 years. Again, if you're married a few times, that's okay. Your interview might take a little bit longer, but we will, um, we will check to see how much you can get per each person and we'll compare it to what you can get off of your own record. Okay, the next slide. It's just a reminder that if you take it as a widow at 60, at 62, you can switch over to your own benefit. You can take it as early as 62 off your own, or you could wait until you're even 70, okay? But if you are a widow, you can take it as early as 60, and then you could switch over from the widows, from your exes, or the one who passed away from the deceased spouse's record. And then once you're 62, though, you can start looking into your own benefit, okay? Now, the next slide talks about social security. So social security was meant to be um, 
Social Security was not, never meant to be an only person savings. Now, we do encourage, as I told you about mymoney.gov, we do encourage you to have other savings. As you can see, you can have other income, you can have savings and investments, you can have other pensions, or whatever the case may be. We, we was never meant to be the only source of income. Unfortunately, a lot of people depend on Social Security 100%, but it was never meant to be that way. Okay, the next slide. Okay, the slide after this. I'm going to skip over. So the slide after this is um, a cloud, and it shows you all of the different calculators that we have. So as I mentioned, we have the life expectancy calculator. We have um, retirement, early retirement, late retirement, earnings test. So we have 11 different calculators that you could file. We even have calculators for spouses. Not every spouse is going to take their benefit at full retirement age. So there's no guarantee that you're going to get that 50% or 100%, right? So you can't just divide it by half. So if a spouse is taking is taking it before full retirement age, you have a calculator for that. Um, you, if you remember looking at your green and white statements, it gives you a couple of options, right? It tells you 62, full retirement age and 70, right? But what if you wanna retire at like 64 in three months? Or what if you wanna retire at like 68 in 10 months, right? What do you do? Well, we have this handy dandy calculator for you, right? We have 11 calculators and this will help you. Now, the great thing about it is everything is housed online. So you don't have to sit there and figure out all your numbers. It's already on there. All you gotta do is create your account. Again, www.ssa.gov slash my account. And you'll be able to go ahead and check your statement and play with the different calculators, okay? Now the next slide is Medicare. So now the next few slides are gonna be on Medicare. And then I know that we have a bunch of people on this call. Thank you everybody for signing up and um, being on this call to listen to me talk about benefits. So I will answer all of your questions as well. And again, if, you're miss, if you've missed this tape or a friend has missed this tape, this is gonna be on the Newport News Library's Facebook page. It is on Facebook Live. Uh, so you could definitely go back to that. Now, um, Medicare, we have four parts. We have Medicare part A, B, C, and D, okay? As I mentioned earlier, Early on the slides, we talked about FICA, and we said 7.65% of every check is being deducted for FICA or Social Security taxes. Of that 7.65%, 6.2% is your money, and 1.45% is your Medicare Part A. Okay, Medicare Part A covers 80% of your hospital bills. So if you're in the hospital for more than three days, you have coverage. So that's great because if you've been to the hospital, you know those bills are expensive and you don't have to, and it covers 80%. So remember, if you didn't work and pay into social security, you gotta pay for that out of pocket. And Medicare Part A on its own, if you go to buy it, you're looking at close to five to $600 a month. So if your employer, if you've worked at least 10 years and paid into Medicare, you have it covered, right? You don't have to worry about that. Now, Medicare Part B covers 80% of your doctor's bills. So if you go to a doctor that takes Medicare, then that covers 80% of your doctor's bills. So that's great, right? And again, you do have to pay a premium for Medicare Part B. That premium is $148 a month in 2021. It was 145 last year. So it does go up every month uh, or every year. Sorry, it does go, not every month. Sorry about that, every year. Um, so it's again, it's $148 this year in 2021. And if you're receiving a social security check already, you don't have to apply for it. It automatically comes to you in the mail at 65 and the deduction already starts. However, if you're not receiving a social security check yet because you want to wait, but you want to get your Medicare, you do have to apply for Medicare. Now you can do that online using our website, socialsecurity.gov, or you can call the local office and make an appointment. Again, the office um, is going to be, you can find your local office phone number at www.socialsecurity.gov slash locator put in your zip code and you'll be able to get the office phone number. Office hours were still available during COVID. Office hours are Monday to Friday, nine to four. You can do all appointments on, on with us or you could do it online. Now part C, closer to when you turn 65, you're getting all sorts of junk mail, right? You're getting mail from AARP, Humana, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Why? Because they want to cover you at the other 20%. They want your business. Now we cannot advise you who to go with because that's more of a choice, you know, who you want your insurance to go with, you know, what you're, what you're looking for in coverages, costs, all of that, but that's going to be your part C. They're going to cover you at the 20%, and then the part D covers you uh, for prescription drugs, okay, D for drugs, okay, so that's going to cover you for prescription drugs, and that you will usually have to get with the private industry, so it's going to be with Humana, AARP, Blue Cross Blue Shield, okay, A and B is what you do apply with Social Security, though. and if you're already receiving benefits, then you don't have to apply because you'll automatically 
automatically get the cards in the mail three months before you turn 65 years old and the deductions will start the month you turn 65. Okay, so the next slide talks about eligibility. Now, with Medicare, you're eligible at different points of your life. Most common, 65, right? Most people know that you could take Medicare at 65 years old. However, let's say you were disabled. Let's say you were disabled at the age of 40, you had a car accident, you did work and pay into Social Security at least five to 10 years, so you're eligible uh, for disability. For disability, as long as you were disabled for two years, you've been getting benefits for two years, 24 months, on your 25th month, you'll automatically get the Medicare cards in the mail. So that's great. You don't have to do a thing and you have coverage for part B and uh, part A and B. OK, now you might not want it. That's a different situation, which I will go over after. But when it comes, you can get it early before the age of 65. If you're on regular Social Security disability after your 24th month of receiving checks on your 25th month, you'll automatically get the checks in the mail. Now, I mean, you'll automatically get the Medicare card in the mail. Sorry about that. And then we also have it for Lou Gehrig's disease. If you have been diagnosed with ALS, you can get Medicare early or if you're going through kidney dialysis. So if you're going through kidney dialysis on a regular routine basis, now, again, this isn't only for you. This is, could be your family. You might have a child that has dialysis issues, right? We'll need to see the birth certificate. You might, because you worked and paid into Social Security and Medicare enough, you could now qualify your child to get Medicare so they can go through their dialysis to help with that. If you have a spouse that has worked that, that has not worked and paid into Social Security, but you as a spouse has, then guess what? You would be due. Uh, you can actually show the marriage certificate or even the divorce decree uh, to see if you could get Medicare care off of your spouse's record. So again, it's not only for you, but it's based on relationships. And that's why we ask all of those uh, uh, for certificates. It might be cumbersome, but that's why we ask for it because we need to see proof, right? To see proof that you are actually related to the person that you're filing for. Okay, so the next slide talks about enrollment. So we have three different enrollment periods. We have initial enrollment period, we have special enrollment period, and we have general enrollment period. Now, initial enrollment period is when you're 65 years old, you take it three months before you turn 65, the month you turn 65, or three months after. So as you can see, initial enrollment period is different for everybody because it's based on your birth month. If my birth month was in April, my initial enrollment would be January, February, March, April, May, June, July. But if my birthday was in May, then my initial enrollment would start in February, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So again, it is different for everybody. Now we do, once you receive benefits, like I said, you'll automatically get the cards in the mail during your initial enrollment period, which is three months before you turn 65. Now, if you're not on benefits, you do need to apply. OK, if you don't have insurance through a current employer or a spouse's current employer, not a previous employer, but a current employer, then you do need to get on Medicare when you turn 65 years old. Now, if you're on TRICARE or you're going to stay on your TRICARE because you're military, then you will have to wait. You do need to take it because tri that's a TRICARE thing. It is not a social security thing. TRICARE requires you to get on Medicare three months before you turn 65 to stay as TRICARE for life. OK, now, this, as you can see, the special enrollment period is if you want to delay your Medicare past the age of 65. So if you delay your Medicare past the age of 65, you can delay it without any type of penalty. But you have to have been working for current. You'd have to be currently working for an employer that has so that you have coverage with health insurance coverage with group health insurance, uh, group health insurance plan with or a spouse's if you're married your spouse has to have been working and you would have to at, at this time and you're 65 and you have coverage through their current employer, not their previous employer, but their current employer uh, through who they're, who they're working for. So if, it's, if you're keeping your insurance through a previous employer, then they don't become your primary insurance, they become your secondary insurance, okay? Because I get a lot of questions on that. If you're keeping your previous jobs health insurance, because it's amazing, Remember, they are not going to become your primary. Medicare is going to become your primary. They will become your secondary. But if you're still working for a company, you can delay your Social Security past the age of 65 without a penalty if you have coverage, not if through your group health insurance plan or through your spouse's group health insurance plan through a current employer. Now, you hear a lot about penalties, right? That's why most people want to take it at 65 years old. Well, this is what we talk about when we talk about general enrollment period. General enrollment period with Social Security is the same every year. It's gonna be from January through March. 
So that's general enrollment. And it will not be go into effect until July. Now, if you wait past the age of 65 and you did not have insurance through a current employer or a spouse's employer, and you take it the year after, for every year you wait, you're going to have a 10% penalty. So if this year the premium is $148, you're going to be paying an extra $14.80, not just one time, but every month. So if you take it a year later, you're getting a 10% penalty. If you take it two years later, you're going to get a 20% penalty and so on. Okay. So again, you don't want to be a general enrollment period person. However, if you have insurance through a current employer or a spouse's current employer past the age of 65 through a current job, then you don't have to worry about that uh, because you won't have a penalty. Okay. And you, but if you don't have that, then you do need to file under initial enrollment period, which is three months before you turn 65, the month of, or three months after. Okay. Next slide. So this is just letting you know, because initial enrollment period, you have the seven month window, depending on when you take it is when Medicare goes into effect. So that this slide actually goes over that. And again, I'm not going to go over it too much because I'm going to be sending you a PDF of this along with other links. Uh, so you will see the slide if you want. If you take it the month of three months before or three months after, depending on when you take it, when your Medicare starts. OK, and this goes over all those seven months. All right. So the slide after this. Okay, so this is letting you know that Social Security is not Medicare. Medicare is its own entity. We are not insurance people. We just get you signed up for it. So um, Medicare.gov has its own website. That's their public facing website. And you can even apply as uh, my Medicare. You can even apply for your my Medicare account, just like there's a my Social Security account. Uh, so you have different, um, different things you can apply for. And again, the my Medicare is good because you'll get to look through your coverages, your costs, and all of that, right? So um, that's a little bit different, um, but it is good to have that My Medicare account and check out our website. This is the public facing website that you see on your screen. Okay, the next slide is talking about extra help. As I said, if you have Medicare Part D, you're doing this through a private company. You're not doing it through Social Security. Um, I mean, you're doing it through Humana, AARP, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. So that's your prescription drug coverage, okay? Like I said, you're gonna do it through a private company. However, if you need help, Social Security does offer extra help, okay? So you do get extra help um, if, you, um, if you are under a certain limit. So we will help you we will help with a subsidy for you. So that's information on extra help, uh, the extra help program. Okay, and there's a financial screening that's done for that. All right, the next slide. The next slide talks about the forms that you need if you file under special enrollment period. See, we can't really take your, um, we can't really take your word that you actually did uh, have insurance through your group health insurance plan. So you're going to have to fill out a couple of forms for us, okay? And, and both of these forms are found on our website, socialsecurity.gov. You can scroll to the bottom and you'll see the link for forms and you could type in under search CMS40B and CMSL564. Uh, the L564 is what your employer fills out and that will verify you that you had insurance through your group health insurance plan. And the CMS40B is what you fill out stating when you want your insurance um, to start. So let's say you're going to retire January of 20, or sorry, December of 2021. If you're going to retire in December of 2021, you want your Medicare Part B to start January of 2022. So what you're going to put on your 40B form is I on the remarks section, I wish to enroll in Medicare effective January of 2022. OK, so that's how that will go. Your employer will verify that you will have insurance with them up until December of 2021. So that's where the L-564 comes in and that's when the 40B comes in. Again, these are both both of these forms are accessible on our website under socialsecurity.gov. Um, you would scroll all the way to the bottom to the forms link and you would do a search and you would put in CMS 40B and CMS L-564. The L-564 is what your employer fills out if you're waiting to take Medicare past the age of 65 years old because you need to show verification that you had insurance through your group health insurance plan. Okay, the next slide or your spouse's group health insurance plan. Again, that's information on mymedicare.gov, which I went over. And the slide after this, is letting you know that the Medicare cards have changed. It used to be your social security number, 
right? But no longer because we, we know identity theft is on the rise. So back in 2019, everybody who had an old Medicare card, and we're looking at close to 60 million people, uh, got a new Medicare card with a new alphanumeric number. And that's really to help combat identity theft. So we don't want you walking around with your social security number because everybody does walk around with their health insurance card. It's an alphanumeric number. It's a unique number. And so it's good if you just give it to your doctor and they have it on file, you could keep it in a safe place so you're not walking around with it because unfortunately there are a lot of false um, medicare claims right false medical claims that come through all right so the slide after this the slide after this is just letting you know that we're still available you could apply for benefits online other than the widow's benefit you can apply for all of the benefits i talked about spousal benefits retirement benefits medicare benefits disability benefits even some for a supplemental security income. Uh, so you can file for all of these benefits online. You can call us at 1-800-772-1213 and you could do it on the phone or, or, you can, or you can contact your local office. And again, the link for that is gonna be the same on the bottom, socialsecurity.gov, but you're gonna do a backslash locator. You're gonna put in your zip code and you'll be able to get the number to the local office. Office hours are Monday to Friday from nine to four. Okay, on the next slide, so this is our public facing website. This is the social security website. As you can see, you'll see links. Now this is the top half. On the bottom half, you'll see the forms and publications and all of that, but you'll see retirement, disability, Medicare. You'll see the little point, the finger there. That's my Medicare. That's how you can create your account. You can, you can do it through our regular homepage, ssa.gov, or you can do socialsecurity.gov slash my account, whatever is easy for you. You can look through the estimators, You're looking at that calculator link over there as well. So we have a lot of great links on our uh, website. The next slide. This gives you the link to the My Social Security account. It's available on any smartphone or tablet. So you could definitely uh, download it um, while you're talking to me, even while I'm doing this webinar, which a lot of people have done. Uh, so you could definitely go ahead and create your account, your My Social Security account. The slide after this tells you why it's advantageous for you to do that. So, okay, so this lets you know if you are receiving benefits, okay, and you need to get your replacement card through the social security, uh, your social security replacement card, or you need to update, like I said, if you're over the age of 18, whether you're getting benefits or not, you're a US citizen, you need to get your social security card replaced, you can do that using your account. You can even create your account without receiving benefits to see your statement, to play with the calculator. So there's a lot of advantages to that. But if you're receiving benefits and you need to update your address, your phone number, your direct deposit, get your 1099, get your proof of income letter, uh, anything like that, you can do all of that online. You need your Medicare card replaced. Again, you need your social security card replaced. You can do all of that using your My Social Security account. Again, it saves you a phone call. It saves you some whole time. It saves you some time to put things in the mail. You can update your address, your phone number, direct deposit. Like I said, get your 1099, especially right now during tax season. So it's really a great resource to, to have and take advantage of. Now, the next slide again tells you you can get your card replaced even if you're not on social security benefits. Um, and if you need a letter stating you're not on benefits for any other program you're filing for, then you can go ahead and request that letter. Uh, you can also get your statement. As I mentioned, you could play with the estimators. So there's a lot of advantages. Um, if you file your application and you want the status of your application, you can get the status of your application online. You can go ahead and file an appeal online if you get denied for any reason. So there's a lot of advantages, even if you're not on benefits yet, to why you have an account. I have an account. I'm not on benefits, but I have an account because I want to make sure that my statement every year is correct. I want to make sure that I'm getting credit for the money that I'm working because I hope to retire in 30 years as well and make sure that my money's correct. So I'm going to double check my earnings record every year. Uh, so I definitely have an account and, and the, the replacement social security does work. Uh, my, my family member has tried it and it did work for them. So I, def I highly recommend you using that if you need to get your your social security card replaced if you're over the age of 18 and a u.s citizen you can do that okay the next slide is a, just step-by-step -step instructions on how to create your account again you would go through socialsecurity.gov slash my account uh you would go ahead and um you would sign in or create an account you would provide personal information and that's just 
it's, it's really um, it's multiple choice. And it's going to ask you things like, where was your address 10 years ago? And it's multiple choice. Some of them could be none of the above. Some of them could be all of the above. Who your first car loan was with. You probably don't remember that bank. Um, if you get locked out, you do have, you can go back in after 24 hours and you could try the questions again. Every time you log in, you will get a text message or an email, whatever you choose, uh, so that you can go ahead and make sure that it is you because you will get a security code. So um, that's definitely, uh, it's definitely there for you for your security. It has not been hacked. In fact, we encourage people to log in and create their account to make sure one has not been created for them. Uh, so it is important that you do check that out because identity theft is always on the rise and you want to make sure that you have access to your information. Okay, the next slide after this is again reminding you that we're all over social media. As, as I said, this is also recorded on Facebook Live. So we are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, we're on YouTube. If you wanna check out videos, just type in social security and you'll be able to get all the information you need. And we also definitely highly recommend you check out our website. We also have a blog. So socialsecurity.gov is definitely a great resource as well. And the slide after this, if there is one, is a fun little slide uh, letting you know that um, I do outreach and education for, um, for the Tidewater area in many cities. So if you need me to talk to your group, just like I did with North, uh, Newport News Public Library, uh, feel free to reach out. I can talk about disability, retirement, identity theft, uh, you know, but we definitely went over a lot of things today. We went over regular retirement, we went over family benefits, and we went over Medicare. Um, so hopefully you did get something out of this. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm open to questions using the Zoom uh, chat box uh, so we can get some questions answered. Only I cannot do personal questions. I can only do general questions. OK, so thank you so much for listening to me. All right. And we're ready to go. All right. Thank you very much, Lizna. Um, let's see. I do. We do, do have a couple of questions in the chat box already. So I'll kind of go down the list. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. If you were born in 1960, not after, what does that look like? And I'm thinking that's referring to the- Full retirement age. Yep. So full retirement age means that you would file, if you're wanting to take, you could take it as early as 62. That's just early retirement. But if you're working, there's a limit to how much you can make, right? And that limit is at 18,960. That's the limit that's placed in 2021. That changes every year. So by the time you turn uh, 62 and want to take it early, that amount's going to change. That amount that you can work can change. Because again, you need more money to live. So uh, it does increase every year the limit um but you would your full retirement age would be 67 if, if you're trying to work and make as much as you like and draw your benefits then unreduced um and if you want to wait you could wait until you're 70 so it doesn't change it's just that the full retirement um age change that's about it okay All right okay so let's see um so if a person continues to work after retirement age, say till 80 years of age, is there a limit on the amount of income that can be earned on an annual basis? Not at all. Once you hit full retirement age, you're free to make whatever you want. That could be 65 if you were born before 1946. Uh, it could be 66. It could be 66 in whatever month, or it could be 67. Once you hit your full retirement age, you're free to make as much as you like. And again, if you're born after 1960, then that looks that's 67 years old. Okay. And let's see, if my full retirement age falls in December, then does everything I made before count against my social security or, oh, as per the slide, so should I wait until January? Well, if you're working and making about 50,000 between January and November, you, you know, um, you, that's fine. You know, it's not good. Well, if you take it in January, right? If you take it the year you turn full retirement age, you can make it a lot more. Uh, if you take it in December, the month you turn full retirement age, you're free to make whatever you want starting December. Uh, so you can actually apply about three to four months ahead of time. And, and in December, once you start receiving your benefit check, December's check will come in January because we pay a month behind. Uh, you're free to make whatever you want starting December 1st. Um, so if that's when you're full retirement age, you're free to make whatever you want. Now, the year you turn full retirement age, as I mentioned, you do get a little bit of a break. So you can make more if you decide to take it that January or that June or whenever you decide to take it. Um, and that year, that amount does change. And it's for every $3 you make over, we withhold a dollar from your check. So that's that, yeah. Okay, and let's see. Um, let's see, it says, can you get, how can I get a personal statement? Okay, 
Okay, it looks like it's a question if you can get a personal statement for your account on the website. Yeah, you can get a personal, you can get your um, benefit statement. Um, so if you're gonna start your benefit at 70, you'll be able to still see your statement. And all you'll do is you'll look at on your family benefit section, how much your spouse can get at full retirement age. Um, let me see when spousal benefits start or errors are not available to be found in a timely manner. Uh, I don't understand. How can I get a personal statement? It's not online since I, st oh, you started spousal benefits. So if you started spousal benefits and you want to start your own benefit at 70, then you can contact the local office at that point since you're already on benefits and you'll be able to um, get that amount. You'll be able to get that. Unfortunately, if you're on benefits, you cannot see your statement. If you're not on benefits yet, you can see your statement. So for that, I'm going to refer you to the local office. To, so you have to identify yourself, make sure it's you, did identity theft, and then you'll be able to uh, look up. Uh, then they'll be able to look you up and let you know what you could get if you wait till you're 70. Okay, let's see. And then it looks like the last question I see. Oh, okay. And did you say part A was free? Yeah, well, you've worked and paid into it. So with FICA, 1.45% is your part A. So you have worked and paid into part A. So you're not paying anything on top of that unless you've made over a certain amount or something, and then you have to pay a little bit. But usually the base is free if you've worked and and paid into it, if at least paid into Social Security for 10 years, and 1.45% is your Medicare Part A. So yeah. Okay. Now, if you can't check your errors, you will be able to get your statement on, you can request it, you can't get it online, but you can uh, go ahead and call 1-800-772-1213, and they will be able to get you your statement, or you can contact the local office and we can verify the amounts with you once you identify yourself. OK, so again, you will have to contact the local office. We are available Monday to Friday, nine to four, pre-COVID, after COVID, all of that. We're still available. Um, again, you can get your local office information at socialsecurity.gov slash locator. Put in your zip code. You'll get the phone number right there using our locator link, our zip code link, and you'll be able to um, contact. You'll be able to deal. You'll be able to call and, and get your information once you identify yourself. All right, and then I think I missed one. Will we be able to get the PowerPoint? And I think you said you'll be able to send all of that. I'll be able to send all of that out to you all tomorrow. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll send that out to you tomorrow along with some uh, links that will help. So you're, this will help you guide through our webpage a little bit more. So hopefully you're not gonna be completely lost because we have a lot of different resources online, um, but navigating it can be tough. So I'll definitely provide um, some links for you. See and oh, any other some, questions? Ah, uh, yes, I have some more here. Let's see. Does my benefit increase eight percent a year till I'm seventy if I don't begin taking ben my benefit? Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Okay, let's see. Um, if there's no advent, there's no advantage in taking. Hold on just for a second. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. So there's no advantage in taking benefits um, past the age of 70. It does not increase past the age of 70, if that's your question. Okay, let's see. Um. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. No, you're fine. I know we have a lot of people on this call, so we have a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, no, he's just trying to clarify for the question, I think. Um, oh, can, I, can I put you on hold just for a second? Hold on. Yeah. One,
Hey, sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry. Any other questions for me? Those are great questions that are coming through. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> I was only trying to do something for a second. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to um, understand that previous question. Let's see. Let me just... Um, can you see the chat by any chance? Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, let me check. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. If I retire from my job but live on my wife's benefits and choose to wait till I am 70 to start taking my social security, does the benefit grow, still grow at 8% a year till I'm 70? Yeah, but remember, if you can, if you have to have been turned, you've had to have turned 62 before, tw I mean, after 20, before 2016 in order to do that. So if you're filing for your spouse's benefit before you take your own benefit, um, you know, you cannot just go ahead and, and do that. If you were born after, if you were, you turned 62 after 2016, you have to file for your own benefit in or before you can take your spouse's benefit. But if you were, if you turned 62 before 2016, then you can go ahead and file under your spouse's and then you could hold off on yours and then take yours um, closer to 70 and you'll get your own delayed retirement credits. Yes. If your spouse has already taken theirs. Yes. But remember, that's that deemed spouse slide. So if you want to refer back to that, once you get the PowerPoint, definitely check out the deemed spouse. Because if you turn 62 after 2016, then you would not, you cannot do that. If you turn 62 before 2016, then you can, then you can do that. Okay, and then let's see. On Medicare A, what about CSRS retirees who only paid med tax since the 80s? You do. You get both. If you are a civil service retirement, you did pay into Medicare. So there is a special code for you. Uh, you did pay into Medicare only, and you, you will be qualifying for Medicare at that time. Yes. Okay. And it looks like that's... Okay, is it is it free or prorated? Medicare Part A is free. Medicare Part B, you pay the premium for the month that you start. So the month you turn 65, if you qualified under special enrollment period, whatever month that's going to be, when you retire from your job, or um, when your, um, you know, or your um, initial, or, you know, your general enrollment period with the penalty. So it just depends on when your Medicare starts. Hmm. Okay, and oh, let's see. Then, okay. So it does sound like um, for some for some of these questions, you might have to contact the office directly. Um, if they're asking more personal questions, then yes. Um, but it looks like we answered most of these questions, right? Yeah, I'm not saying that's just yeah. about everything, but <clears throat> yeah, that's all the questions I see in the chat at the moment. All right. Well, that's um, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, that was a lot um, of information to process. So hopefully you'll get the, the links and the, the PowerPoint presentation and all of that. So you can read through it and make sure that, you know, you go on your own pace and you check it out, you know, based on what you need on the links and all that. So hopefully that will be a helpful resource. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry, I missed a question. It was the very, <laughs> the very first question, actually. Um, so if none of the, it looks like if none of the questions online refer to you, should you call the office? Of course, of course. I mean, if you have a general question now, I can I can answer it for you. Um, you don't have to. I, I just don't want your information to the Privacy Act. Um, but if you have a question, you can always contact the office. I'm not a substitute for the local office. I just do education and outreach on a general overview. Uh, but you could definitely contact the office Monday to Friday, nine to four. Um, again, your local office information is available on our website, socialsecurity.gov slash locator. Just plug in your zip code and you'll be able to get the number. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It looks like they're referring to the questions when trying to get a replacement card. Oh, yeah. If you're trying to get a replacement card, you just have to have a My Social Security account. Once you get into the account, there's going to be a tab that says replacement documents. So just put in your driver's license information and you'll be able to um, ask for your replacement card. 
but your my social security account in order for you to create one you're going to have to go through some multiple choice questions initially yeah they're saying if none of the questions apply you can do none of the above yeah there's there's going to be uh there should be a little uh it's a multiple choice so some of them will say all of the above and some of them will say none of the above so if it's none of the above it's none of the above you know okay and you said before you said the lockout should wear off 24 hours yeah you can log back in after 24 hours if you get locked out mm -hmm. you can try again new set of questions <laughs> so yeah hopefully you'll get through so yeah now if you have any issues with that you can always contact the local office again we will help you uh, we will unblock you if it is something that once you identify yourself we can go ahead and help you with that too so yeah okay I think um, these are more personal situations, so you could definitely contact the local office to see what's going on. Maybe there's a mismatch with your middle name, the, your date of birth, you know, the way you've spelt your name. So it could be a number of reasons why you're not getting through so that you would have to identify yourself with the local office to see what's the, what's the situation. Oh, let's see. We have time. Yeah, we still have time for Another question. Yeah. Um, so it's it's about Medicare B. Okay. Um, let's see. On need for B. It's up to you. I mean, it's insurance, just like anything else. So if you need the Medicare Part B, you're going to ask to get it. If you don't need it, you're not going to ask for it. It's insurance. But remember, if you don't take it. Uh, if you're past 65 years old and you're not covered under a group health insurance plan or a spouse's group health insurance plan, then, you know, you will have a penalty for it if you decide to take it later, uh, because most doctors do take Medicare, you know, uh, so um, you have to, that's a more, that's more of a personal, it's an insurance, right, just like any other insurance, so you don't need to take it, however, if you're going to be on TRICARE, if you're military, then they do require you to take it. Uh, for you to be on TRICARE for life. Um, most of the insurance companies do want you to have it. Uh, but again, you don't have to have it if you have your previous employers covering you at 100% or you have other insurance. I mean, you don't want to be overinsured if you don't need it, right? So there's no need for it, but it's really up to you if you want it. It's available. Um, and it's 150 bucks a month. It gets deducted from your check. If you are not receiving a check yet, it's it, they take um, it'll you'll be billed quarterly until you receive a check, um, and then um, it covers 80 percent of your doctor's bills. So it's not bad. You know? Which again, it's it's up to you if you want it. It's it's insurance, right? You don't have to have it. It's up to you. But remember, you don't want to be stuck with a penalty either if you delay it and you need it later, right? So you got to think about that. That's more of a personal case-by-case -case situation. Okay. Um, do we have any more general questions? Does anybody have? Now's your time. You don't want to wait in the office or give us a call and be on hold. You can't come into the office, so you don't want to be on hold. <laughs> All right. So looks like that might be it for tonight. Oh, hold on. It says oh. I called oh. SSA. I was told B was not needed. I do have BCBS and I will keep it. That, that That's again, that's more of I'm sorry. I was just reading that one. I could have could have been um, um, delayed in that. But again, it's a personal choice. I mean, if you don't need it, you don't have to have it. It's insurance. So yeah, that, and I, if that's it. Then that's great. But if you have any other questions, that's fine. Oh, let's see. All right, and again, um, we will be um, posting this on our Facebook page. It'll also be on the Newport News Public Library's YouTube page. So if you ever want to review any of this information and we'll also, I'll also make sure that we all, you all get the I'm sorry, the presentation as well as those additional links. Sure. I see they have a federal employee still working, soon to be 66. That's amazing. We actually have a WEP, the a windfall elimination provision, and GPO calculators online. So that's one of our 11, that's two of our 11 uh, calculators. So if you are a CSRS and you also worked and paid into Social Security, 
uh, then you have access to that uh, to check out what your benefits will be. And if you are um, if you are just FERS, then that's great too because you worked and paid into Social Security. Uh, so um, that's different. And uh, let's see, uh, legend or something. I decide to retire. When should I enroll in Medicare? Um, Medicare is sixty five. Uh, so you would, if you want Medicare, you could do it as three months before you turn 65, the month over three months after. Uh, retirement could be any time between 62 and, and 70. So uh, you could do it three months before you turn 65 if you want to be on Medicare Part B. Okay, so thank you for the TRICARE. I appreciate that. That's, yeah, I, I actually work with the TRICARE rep. So, um, so I do know about the TRICARE and Medicare. But if they still have BCBS, I don't know what BCBS is. I, I that could be another. Oh, Blue Cross. Oh, Blue Shield. Cross. Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, Blue Cross Blue Shield would become your secondary. Unless they are saying you can do it as, unless they're going to keep you at a hundred percent, Blue Cross Blue Shield would become your secondary. And if you're SERS, okay, yeah. So if you're FERS, uh, chances are you paid into Medicare. So you could take Medicare at 65. And then of course, Blue Cross Blue Shield will become your secondary. Saying if they have BCBS, then they don't need to enroll if they- If they're gonna cover them at 100%, but usually previous employers, they will not cover you at 100%. They'll become your a secondary insurance. They will not become your primary insurance, but you'll have to, again, you'll have to check with Blue Cross Blue Shield and what they're gonna cover you as once you retire. Because if you decide to take it after 65 with social security and you didn't have insurance through your current job, you don't wanna be paying a penalty either. So again, you'd have to check with Blue Cross Blue Shield and see how that's covered how you're covered with them once you retire. Okay, let's see, a federal Blue Cross plan, does it take the place of Part B? I mean, again, you'd have to check with Blue Cross Blue Shield. I cannot speak for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah, that's <laughs> you don't have to speak to them. Yeah, unfortunately, for some of these questions for Blue Cross Blue Shield, you might have to. Yeah, and if, if you're still employed, there's no penalty. You would be under special enrollment period. So if you are employed, there is no penalty you would be under the special enrollment period. If you are not, if you are not in, employed, then of course you would have taken it three months before you retire or 65 um, if that's the case so that you won't have to pay that extra penalty. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so that might be it for the questions then. Good. Perfect. Well, um, thank you all for being here tonight. And um, thank you, Lizna, again. <laughs> no problem my pleasure and I'm happy to answer any and all questions that's what I'm here to do um so I'm glad that we did have a good turnout tonight and uh you know we were hopefully got some good information out and got some questions and hopefully you know more about your resources available with social security and you'll get a ton more uh when you get that email from Adrian <laughs> so thank you thank you for your partnership oh and then let's see oh and a few um Oh, as uh, I guess could plug in the library. Um, yeah, <laughs> always, um, always visit us at nnpl.org, and we do have other programs like this every now and I then. Remember, there's a Facebook Live, so if you want to re rewatch it, it's available on their homepage, right? <laughs> on your on your Facebook page, so that's oh. great. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so um, all of you have a good night. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.